What's up fam, Extraordinary Life with Elijah. Mm. I love it when we start heading into the fall. The leaves are starting to change on the tree. It's starting to get a little bit more crispy outside. You gotta let a little bite to the air. Oh, it's just beautiful out here. So I always love it when we hit this time of the year. Last week's video talking about how I was helping Kailani get potty trained and just that aspect of God's glory. He just continues to empower us to be authorities in his kingdom. Regardless of how big of messes we make with it, he wants us to learn how to steward his spirit well. And this last week, Kailani, joy. I'm so joyful over you. I'm so thankful for you in the Lord. You are my extra again, and I am the ordinary. Friends, I was super frustrated in the whole potty training process. I've waited a whole week plus 10 days now to make this video because I wanted to see how long we could go with success before I dropped this bomb of a principle. And it has been true. Azriella, when she potty trained, she was all about the snacks. When we would tell her that she had messed in her pants and that she couldn't have a snack, she would cry and she'd be so upset. And we would encourage her and say, honey, you didn't get a snack this time, but if you keep your pants nice, if you don't pee or poop in your pants and you put it in the potty, you're gonna get one snack for peeing and two snacks for pooping. That just worked like a charm. She was all about the snacks. Sometimes she would just run to the potty to jump on the potty because she actually wanted a snack. It was all about it. Well, with Kailani, I kept telling her, honey, you, you peed in your pants, honey, and now you're not gonna get a snack. And that just was not working. As I pointed out in video last week, that she said, don't worry, daddy, I have more underwear as we can get more. Mm. Nope, that's not how this works. So on day three of just her peeing in her pants over and over, in one of her times, I was taking her into the potty in the midst of her peeing, carrying her to the bathroom and she's just raining pee down everywhere and I'm, I'm praying and I'm asking the Father, Father, what do I do? This is so frustrating. I'm having a hard time responding as a parent and not reacting because I'm getting really frustrated. I was praying in this moment of prayer, he asked me, have you considered what motivates Kailani? Now I've known for a long time what motivates Kailani, but because we had had a process before that had worked so well with Azriella that when she made the switch to being potty trained, she did not ever poop in her pants, she didn't pee in her pants, and she was potty trained in about three days. Boom, golden, two years on, moving from there, she was potty trained, which is such a blessing. I realize that that's not everybody's experience. So it worked with Azriella, and so that's what we did round two with Kailani, but it wasn't working. I was getting frustrated as a father because I was attempting to train my daughter with what works, gotten amazing results, but she wasn't responding to the training. Father asked me, what does Kailani respond to? As I sat her on the potty, she peed just a little bit more on the potty, and she made just that much, and so I decided, I'm gonna celebrate Kailani. I jumped up, I ran back and forth in front of the bathroom door, ran inside of bedrooms, out of bedrooms, opened and closed doors on my own head, jumped up on the bathroom counter, jumped up on the bathtub and was spanking my own butt, running in circles, yelling and screaming. And from that point, she didn't have another single wet diaper, not at night, not during nap time, not during the day, and not only so, that very day, she started taking herself to the bathroom, getting up on the potty, peeing and wiping herself, and come out from the bathroom and say, Dad, I peed again. I realized that the thing that Kailani responds to most is honor. When she's not eating her food at dinner, telling her that she's not gonna get any ice cream after dinner, 
doesn't work, doesn't even phase her. She says, okay, dad, I'm full, and she wants down. But if we as a family say, if you'll finish your food, we'll stand up on our chairs and we will clap for you and honor you, she will stick all of her food in her mouth to the place that she's gagging on her food and say, I'm done with my food. The lesson that I learned with Kailani is that God employs the system of honor that most perfectly motivates his children to engage his heart for his good pleasure. As I extrapolate that backwards to our church leadership as fathers and mothers in the faith, what I realize is that much of my discipleship processes with other people have been oriented to what has either worked in my own life or has worked well in the lives of others. It's the, the 40 days accessible to whatever. 40 days to a heart like David's. 40 days to prayer that changes countries. Like There's all these programs that are like, this has worked for so many people and we know that it's gonna work for you too. Well, maybe. Here's my thought. We have lots and lots of denominations within the United States today. By some counts, as many as 39 to 40,000 different denominations and groups of people calling themselves by different names. And then you have the non-denominational groups, which in itself is its own camp. Mostly what it is, is groups of body parts that all gather together who have the same tastes and the same orientation to how they're motivated with God, the things that they're passionate about. A pastor named Danny Silk has this awesome expose of the fivefold where he's just getting super silly and that each one of the fivefold has a different emphasis within their leadership that the prophets are seeing meaning in everything they don't have digital clocks they have supernatural portals into the meaning of the universe <laughs> and the evangelists they all say god said to say go he didn't say stay so why are you all sitting here in this room we should be out in the streets evangelizing and the pastors get upset because leaders are pushing people to do things that make them uncomfortable and sad and they're not maintaining unity in the snuggly snuggles. I think out of this example, this experience with Kailani, what I've learned in a new way is that it's so important to, to speak with the father and talk with him about how to co-parent his children well. To find out what is the thing that motivates each person? What is the thing that is their, their reward? Scripture says that those who come to God must first believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. If you tell me that you're going to reward me with an unassisted trip to the top of Mount Everest without oxygen, that's not a reward to me. That is definitely a punishment. I would run screaming from you if you told me that that was going to be my reward for doing something good. That sounds horrible. However, if you told me that you were going to stick me on a plane, send me to Scotland so that I could sit in a little hut overlooking the ocean, the Scottish moors, and just be able to sit there for three months and write in a journal while drinking coffee and really fine scotch while smoking my pipe. Mmm. I'd probably work a very long time to be able to get that reward. <laughs> I would do a lot of stuff to get that reward because it's a reward to me. Might not be a reward for you. But here's the thing. The place of wisdom and discernment as a father over a, a body of people is to realize that each part is different. To realize that each child of God has a different resonance with heaven on what a reward is. The proof is in the pudding though. I went from snacks with Kailani, completely unmotivated, to I am going to honor you, and she went from peeing her pants, peeing her pants, peeing her pants, making messes, not listening, not joining vision, to bam, she hasn't had a mess in her diapers since that day. Friends, I hope this is an encouragement to you. 
If you're a leader, I pray that God anoints your ears, that he gives you a, a spirit of revelation and of understanding to know how to apply this insight, this prophetic revelation from my little girl in your body, how to motivate your people and to have conversations with our Father over how you may have been offering snacks instead of honor. And for you personally listening to this, I hope it encourages you to ask the Father what it is that you're motivated by, to, to let Him motivate your heart with the rewards that, that brings life and empowerment for you to join him in his work in keeping your pants clean. If you subscribe to what I'm doing, hit the button. Hit it and then get it. Hit the bell as well so you get notified with the new content. And if you love this video, you didn't just like it, hit the thumbs down button. I pray blessings on our lives together. I love you guys lots. And I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. I love fall. It's so beautiful. This tree over here. Such beautiful golden brown leaves. Mmm. Goodness. That's a video that's begging to be made in my mind right now. But that's not the topic for the day. Hmm. What's up, fam? Extraordinary life with Elijah. And today, the Salvadoran people, <laughs> entire people group, are my extra and I am the ordinary. Here a number of years ago, back in 2012, my wife and I went and spent close to two years in El Salvador.